Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to be looking at cells, and so we're going to be talking about uh, animal cells, plant cells, bacteria, and yeast. So we're going to look at the differences between those um, and what they contain. So the important thing is that you need to know um, the different components of the cells, and you also need to be able to compare the different types of cells in terms of animal, plant cells, uh, bacteria, and yeast. And so let's go on and have a look at an animal cell now. So the animal cell, um, we can normally just draw it as a circle, all right? And so we've got the circle, and we have this in the middle here, and we can straight away label three things. So the outside, so the protective barrier, which is outside the cell, is known as the cell membrane, all right? The cell membrane. Now this blob that I've drawn in the middle is called the nucleus. All right, the nucleus. And this empty, it looks like empty space, but in reality it's a thick uh, gel-like liquid and, it, and it's uh, contained in all cells, is known as the cytoplasm. All right, the cytoplasm. So what do all three of those do? Well, the cell membrane uh, basically controls the passage of things going into and out of the cell. It's like a barrier. Uh, it lets certain things in and it doesn't let certain other things in. So it controls what can go in and out. The cytoplasm is where the chemical reactions um, take place in the cell. So it's like, basically, if you were doing an experiment in a test tube, right, the solution that you're doing the experiment in is like the cytoplasm, so it's where things are going to happen. And the nucleus, well, the nucleus, um, we say that it controls the activities of the cell, all right? But the way it does that is that it contains the DNA, and the DNA is the really important molecule, which um, gives you all of your characteristics and controls uh, what is going to be going on at what time in your cell. And so there are more things that we need to be able to label. One of them... Uh, you might see something like this, okay, these things, and you'll see them a lot in cells. This is a mitochondrion, and collectively we call them mitochondria, okay, mitochondria. All right, and what do the mitochondria do? Well, mitochondria is where... Uh, aerobic respiration takes place in the cell, and what that means is this is where we get the energy out of our food, so our Glucose is broken down at the mitochondria and it releases energy. And so that's um, where you actually get your energy from. And the smaller dots, okay, that you'll see in the cytoplasm are known as ribosomes. All right, ribosomes. Okay, and those ribosomes, well, what do they do? They are where protein synthesis happens, okay? So that's where proteins are made. Proteins are important for almost every process that goes on inside the cell because we've got things uh, known as enzymes, right? You should know what they are. But ribosomes are extremely important because they are where the proteins are made. No ribosomes, then no proteins are going to be made. All right, and so that is an animal cell. I'm going to go down now and draw for you a plant cell. The second one you need to know is the plant cell. Really, the plant cell is the most complicated out of the four, all right, because it basically has everything that an animal cell has and more. Okay, so it's going to look like this. It's going to have, you can probably guess what that is. We've also got this in the middle. And you have these things, you should know what they are. And you'll have your smaller ones. Okay, the colors don't matter. In reality, you can't even see them. Um, if you look down a microscope, you can only see them if you stain them. And that's why they come up different colors because we stain them and then you can see them through a microscope. Uh, so the colors don't matter. I've only drawn it green to show that it's plant and red was for animal. All right, and so let's label. Now, first I'm going to label the things which we've already seen. And this inner layer, not the outer layer, is the cell membrane, okay? And we already have seen the cell membrane, and we know what it does. Now, this here, this shaded in blob, is the nucleus, just like we saw before. The empty black space is the cytoplasm. Of course, it's not actually empty space in reality. It's really thick gel-like liquid, but I'm not going to shade the whole cell in. 
These small dots, or remember the small dots are the last thing we looked at, and those are the ribosomes where protein synthesis is going to happen. These larger um, circles, well, we've seen those as well. Those are the mitochondria, and that's where cellular respiration is going to occur. All right, and now we've basically labeled what we labeled before, but we have more things to label. And so I'm gonna move sideways like this so we're in the middle and we've got more space. So the first thing I'm gonna label is the outside layer. So we said the inside layer is the cell membrane just like before. Well, the outside layer is the cell wall, all right? The cell wall. And what's the difference between the cell wall and the cell membrane? Well, the cell wall, rather than controlling the substances that go in and out, the cell wall provides strength and support to the plant cells, right? And that's more important in plants than it is in animals because plants have to be able to stand upright, but they can't move and they don't have a skeleton like we do, right? So the plants need to have something which strengthens their cells and stops them from lying flat when they're um, void of water. So the cell wall provides strength and support. The next one is this inside massive circle that you've seen or massive um, oblong that you've seen. And this is known as the vacuole. Okay, the vacuole. Sometimes you'll see it written as permanent vacuole. So I'll write that in as well. All right, permanent vacuole. Now the vacuole contains something called cell sap, right? And this is basically um, sugar and water. All right, and what that does is it actually also support, supplies, sorry, support for the cell and maintains uh, the cell's rigid structure. But it contains cell sap, whereas the cell wall obviously doesn't contain cell sap, so that's why they're different, all right? Okay, lastly, we have one more thing that I haven't drawn. I'm gonna draw it in a dark green, just so we can um, distinguish it. So there we go, there we go, there we go down there. And there we go down there. And this is what makes the green plants green. And those are, in case you don't know, the chloroplasts. Okay, the chloroplasts. So they're sort of similar in size to the mitochondria. And that's why I've draw I've shaded these in and I've drawn them a different uh, shade of green. Um, but they are the chloroplasts. And what happens in the chloroplasts is photosynthesis. All right, so plants can carry out photosynthesis to produce oxygen from carbon dioxide. And they also produce uh, sugar. So that's how they make their own food. Uh, and the chloroplasts are the um, sites or the organelles, as we call them, where that actually takes place. All right. And so that's the difference. So if you want to see the differences between the plant cell and the animal cell, well, the cell wall, the permanent vacuole and the chloroplasts are not present in the animal cell. If we scroll back up. The animal cell does not contain those structures, but it does contain a membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria and ribosomes. OK. So next, let's have a look at another type of cell. I'm going to have a look at a yeast cell. Yeast cell. All right. Now, yeast, the reason I'm doing yeast before bacteria is because yeast are actually pretty similar to the two above. They're pretty similar to animal and plant. They're almost an in-between between animals and plants. Now, they do, they're not anything like animals or plants in terms of the actual organism, but the cells um, have things in them. Uh, which are similar. All right, so let's have a look at the cell structure. We'll draw it as a circle just so we don't confuse it with a plant. Now that was really sort of over the top, so let's make sure that that's a bit closer. There we go. All right, and we have this, which you should know what that is. Um, and okay. And we'll also have some of these guys. And now you should be familiar with what all these things are. All right, and that's enough. So we have our cell wall, just like in plants. Okay, we have our cell membrane, just like in all cells. Okay, we have the small dots, which are the ribosomes, because yeast, just like anything else, need protein. We have our cytoplasm, where all the chemical reactions are gonna take place. We have a nucleus, okay, where the DNA is stored and um, where the functions of the cell are controlled. And whoops, that arrow's in the wrong place. There we go. And we also have these guys, which are mitochondria. 
All right, and that is a yeast cell. Now, yeast are not animals or plants. They are single-celled organisms, um, and they come under the fungus category, okay? So yeast is actually a fungus. They can reproduce by um, asexual reproduction in a, in a process known as budding. So they can reproduce asexually and not sexually, which makes them uh, very different from animals and different from most plants as well. And you should know that yeast uh, carry out anaerobic respiration, which we call fermentation, because we use yeast to produce bread and, of course, to produce alcohol for beer and wine. All right, now finally we're going to have a look at the um, bacteria cell. Okay, so bacteria or bacterial cell is more correct, because bacteria is plural. Okay, so the bacterial cell. Now this one um, does have quite a lot of differences compared to the other three because these are prokaryotes and the other three are eukaryotes. Now, I'm just gonna draw it first before I explain. I'm gonna have something like this. There we go. And there we go. Looks pretty different looks even more different and okay these don't look as different okay the little dots that you find and we have this outside which again looks very different okay and there we are now this isn't a perfect drawing, but um, you'll get the idea because we've labelled all the features on here. So, first of all, let's look at a few things which are familiar. And so the black space on the diagram, which is actually a thick gel-like liquid, is of course the cytoplasm. Okay, and these small dots are ribosomes. In reality, they're slightly different to the ribosomes you find in the rest of them, but they are still ribosomes, they're just smaller. All right, um, and we also have a cell membrane. Cell membrane. And the outer purple layer there is the cell wall. All right, so that's pretty much it for everything that's the same. Um, now we are gonna have a look at the differences. So let's scroll across. Now the most striking that you can see is this orange one, obviously. And that is what we call the slime capsule. Okay, the slime capsule. Now what that does is it allows the bacterial cell to get through certain barriers, right? Because certain barriers wouldn't allow it to get through and the slime capsule allows it to get through them. And what it also does is it provides extra protection against things like antibiotics and other drugs or chemicals that could cause the bacteria harm. All right, now what's this squiggly thing in the middle? Well, that's the bacteria's version of the nucleus. The bacteria doesn't have a nucleus. This is just the DNA, um, just out in the open in the cell. So this is what we call genetic material, right? Genetic material. In the other cells, so in animal plant cells and yeast cells, the genetic material is all contained within the nucleus, but bacteria do not have a nucleus. All right, now what else? These circles, they are not mitochondria, okay? They're a different shape, they're not mitochondria. These are actually made of genetic material as well, but they're separate from the main piece of genetic material and we give them a separate name. And that name is plasmids, all right? So that is actually still DNA, but that DNA can move around and do other things that the main um, genetic material can't do. For example, bacteria can pass plasmids to each other and that's almost a way of bacteria having sex because bacteria reproduce asexually and they produce clones of each other. But if they can swap plasmids, then you do get some genetic variation. All right, now the, the squiggly things on the end, those are, as they look, the tails, right? And we call those flagella. Flagella, right? Singular of that is flagellum, but multiple are the flagella. And the flagella basically allow the bacteria to move because bacteria exist as one cell and they need to move about. And so the flagella allow them to move. All right, and that is basically it. So that is the difference between the four types of cells. 
Now the bacteria cell are way smaller than the other cells as well, that's something you do need to know. Um, but aside from that, being able to label the diagrams with the different organelles and the different features is something that you definitely need to be able to do. So I hope that has helped. Um, if you do have any questions remaining on this topic that I haven't covered, please feel free to put them in the comment box below or send me a direct email and I'll be sure to get back to you. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.